Hey friends, familia. Today is day two of our 21 days of IAC. And I know you're getting as anxious as we are to get out to the camps. Hang in there. We're getting a little bit closer. In a little while, you'll get to hear from Martin. And he's this charismatic aid worker and an expert on camp life. It was a busy day today. We started off by going to the World Food Program where we got on the list for the flight to Abetchi. From there, we went on to the UN High Commission on Refugees where they processed our press pass from the government of Chad and now we're press. Next, you get to meet Chris Besnecker and he's my travel partner and the man behind the camera. I met Gabriel about uh, four months ago and uh, he came and gave a presentation that I attended and uh, I guess a couple things struck me about Gabriel. One was uh, his uh, huge commitment to this cause and two was the fact that he was probably a little in over his head and uh, I kind of like uh, I kind of like people who are in over their head and don't know it and um, and uh, can't see the obstacles in front of them because of their commitment and so I joined, joined in and signed on and I am now uh, the man behind the cam so when you see the the shakiness that's that's the sand. Um, I also came along um, sort of a personal commitment uh, back in 1994, uh, I went to Tanzania to operate a small camp for Tutsi refugees uh, post Rwanda. And I don't think any of us really realized what had happened there. Uh, even, even in 1994, working in the refugee camps, I don't think any of us really realized what went on. And when we did, uh, it was clear that we, we did too little too late. And I felt ashamed about that. And I know a lot of people who were there uh, felt ashamed as well. So I guess for me this is a, this is a little redemption. A little redemption in the desert. So nothing like a good sandstorm to cleanse the soul. So um, so I'm here and uh, you probably won't see me a lot and um, I'll try to keep the camera steady as possible. Right now we're not doing much except drinking some rum and eating uh, dinner. <laughs> uh, we have Yun Lin from Northern California who is uh, remotely uh, playing with our computer. And this is so we can uh, hopefully get all of the uh, kinks worked out of the system. and. Uh, Having completed that, we should be able to upload our uh, uh, compressed form of our video. Here we have about uh, 200,000 refugees in 12 camps in eastern Chad. For the reason that uh, there was internal conflict in Sudan, the four area, where um, majority of these refugees were displaced. And from their stories is that uh, the Sudanese government, in collaboration with the Janjaweed, Janjaweed means armed men on horses, who came and started burning their houses after the Sudanese government had sent planes to bomb uh, their, their houses. They were left behind in the Sudan. Some are being traced in different camps in Chad. So all this combined together, you find that uh, the issues of trauma for the children and for adults, especially the most vulnerable people, is still there. And one of the things I liked about it is that I was able to establish this bond 
between myself and the children and every you know center I went in the in the zones in general they keep on waving you know you feel you are doing something with nice smiles you know and when you look also at some of the activities they are doing especially the drawing initially it was violence it was just like helicopters guns people dying people you know they could draw people like adults in the in the gully but you as an adult you could feel that is rape that is a, a, a girl being defiled you know so all these kids had all these pictures with them which was put on paper you know just to show how traumatized they are with the violence that went on in Darfur but after some time the pictures started changing and right now as I speak they are now drawing people beautiful faces UN and NGO cars with flags passing you know nature forest they are drawing now real pictures that you feel there has been some changes amongst these children do you do the refugees want to return home yeah they do they do if there is security it is the whole thing is just based on how secure are they if they have to return home many of them would like to return home